Hey guys, as you can tell by the thumbnail and the title of the video, I got a uh, power station in to review and figured we'd do a quick unboxing, kind of go over all the dimensions, specs, everything like that, put it to use and uh, see how it does. This one is from King Boss from Amazon, came in this cardboard box. Um, I've cut the top of the box open, but I've not opened up the power station yet. And they include like a carrying bag with it. And then the power station is in there. And I'll go over that receipt here in just a bit with you guys. So as I mentioned, this power station is from King Boss. They're kind of newer to the market. Um, I've done reviews for Jackery, Blue Eddy, um, Upez, Chaffon. Um, so I've done quite a few of these and I really feel like everybody should have one, whether it's a small one or one of the you know two or 3,000 watt ones. There's so many uses. Um, you can look at like some of the uses right here, but really there's so much more that you can do with these things. Um, this particular one, we'll go over the box here before I open it, um, but it has a 600 watt inverter with a 1200 watt peak. So basically you can run any devices, appliances that are up to 600 watts continuous. Um, this one does have, it's a 568 watt hour, um, just to kind of let you know on that. And then we'll go over some of the other sides here. So. We'll just kind of quickly show the box because I'll go into great detail on everything that's here. It does say it weighs 11 pounds. I'll check that out here in a bit. Um, those dimensions are in millimeters, so I'll actually measure it. Um, shows all the different things, all the different protections that it has. This here is kind of interesting. I have not seen one that actually says you can do this. Um, there's a lot of these that have the ability to jumpstart a car, but they come with like jumper cables. What this one is claiming is that you can get one of the little cords that has a 12 volt male plug on both ends. You can plug it in here, plug it into your cigarette lighter or 12 volt of your car, and you can jumpstart it that way. So pretty interesting. And then here's a lot of the stuff that is in this intelligent monitoring, short circuit, protection over, charge protection, over power. So if you put something that's more than 1200 watts, it'll shut itself off. Temperature protection, over current, over voltage, all kinds of stuff built into this thing. We'll get this quality control sticker up and see how it's packaged in here. So there is a box here, which I assume has like all of the charging cables and stuff like that up on top. We'll go over that in a minute. And then the power station itself is down here. Real thick foam protection. We'll slide this thing out. So I'll kind of quickly show you that bag that came with it. It does look like it has some type of like reflectix type material, which I assume it would keep it cooler if you had it outside in the sun. Pretty decent bag. I mean, all the stitching's real good on it. Zippers appear to be real nice. It's got a, a storage up on the top here, a little storage compartment. There's also a little area right there. I don't know how much I'll use the bag, but they do include it. And then also the box here. Uh, looks like there is a user manual. And then another bag. And then inside of this bag, looks like all of the cables. Um, so this is the wall charging brick, and then you would use this with that. So 
So those go together. Um, that looks like that's just like a, um, basically it's like a USB-A that's then going to give you multiple other, we'll open that up in a minute, but it looks like it, uh, it has, so like basically you can plug one of these in and then it's like a splitter to where you could charge uh, three or four devices at the same time. And this here is the 12 volt car charger but it's just to charge this unit. This is not to jump another car. So yeah, basically what this cable was here is you would plug this down into the USB-A port, and then on this other end, it'll give you a micro USB, a USB-C, and a lightning cable. So you can basically only have to take up one port off of here to be able to charge three different devices leaves another open port for something else and some rough dimensions uh it's about 10 and a half inches wide uh maybe seven and a half seven and three quarters inches tall and just about seven inches deep and i'll get you a weight here in a second and the thing weighs let's see just over 10 pounds. Well, quickly, just gonna go around. So we got a cooling fan on one side, got some rubber feet on the bottom with some information there. Uh, nothing on the back other than a little sign telling you that it is a pure sine wave inverter in it. So that 600 watt inverter is a pure sine wave. So that's good for all your sensitive electronics, computers, stuff like that. This side has a light and it looks like some venting. I don't see a fan up through there. So I think it's just a light on that side and there's a power switch for that. Obviously the top is a big rugged handle. Um, the overall construction of this thing is really, really nice. Like the plastic feels good. It does not feel cheap or thin at all. Um, this is really similar to like the Jackery ones. Um, there's almost even like some texturing, if you can see that in the plastic, um, feels really good. So front display here, this here is the input. So this is where you will do all the charging, whether it's with the wall or car or whatever. So I'll have to figure out the size of that. I'm not sure if that's an eight millimeter or if that's a 5521, but basically that'll charge, charge the unit through there. This here is one of your uh, DC ports. So again, if you need to charge something that has the cigarette style 12 volt, you would plug that in there. Um, these are typically 5521 barrel connectors right here. A lot of solar lights and stuff like that will run off of that. Uh, through here is like part of your DC side. So you'll have a USB-A here. You'll have another USB-A that's a quick charge and a USB-C. And then over here is the AC side. This is where you'll take the DC battery and convert it to AC. Um, so you can use lamps, fans, all types of stuff, whatever, TVs, routers, modems, whatever you want to use that you would normally plug into a household outlet, you'll use over here. So just pulling this out of the box, haven't even powered the thing on yet, but one small complaint I have is I would like to see that little protective film, that little cover over top of the display, because I actually can see a little bit of scuffing on that display. Um, so King Boss, if you watch this video, put some type of cover, like one of those little clear sticker type things over top of that display. Whenever we get to charge in this thing later, again, like I mentioned, it has 568 watt hours. This thing here, this is the charging brick. Its output is 20 volts and five amps. So if we do that conversion, that's 100 watt hours right there. So this thing should take about five and a half hours to fully charge using the wall. So one of the first tips I'm gonna give you with these power stations is when you get them, just go ahead and start using it. We'll power it on here in a minute, but use this thing all the way down until the thing powers itself off. I've had these in the past where I'll get it right out of the box like this and then I'll charge, I'll try to charge it up and I can never get them to go to 100% on certain models anyways. Um, and then what I found out 
is that if you drain the battery on these and then you charge them up, they'll go to 100% every single time afterwards. Um, and what I always do is I put like a constant load. So once I power this on and start showing you guys some of the features, I'll put like a fan or something that maybe draws like 80 watts or 100 watts or something. And I'll let this thing go for however much time is left on it until the thing completely shuts off. And then we'll charge it up. So kind of similar to the Jackery, the King Boss uses a lithium ion battery inside of it. Um, some of the other manufacturers are going with a lithium iron phosphate. Um, and really the, the biggest difference is the life cycle of the batteries and the number of charge cycles that you can get. This one here, they claim that you can get around 800 charge cycles before the battery starts to degradate at all. Um, which like, let's say you use this every single weekend and you charge it up every weekend. So 52 times a year and you get 800 charge cycles. Well, that's going to last you almost 16 years. And then it's not like you throw the thing away. What it means is that you only get like maybe 90% of the charge or 80% of the charge. Um, so instead of having 568 watt hours, you might have 500 watt hours. It's, you know, it's, this thing will last probably 20 to 30 years total. So a lot of people think, well, you can only charge it 800 times and then it's junk. No, that's not the case. Like you can continue to use these things. You just don't get, it's like your phone, you know, after so many years, if you plug it in and out every single day, after so many years, your, your battery just doesn't last as long as what it originally did. So let's power the thing on. We'll see uh, what charge it came with. Um, look at the display and go over all the different ports and everything. So it arrived at 40%. Um, we can obviously see right now I don't have anything plugged in. So there's no input going in. There's no output going out. So let's go grab a couple things and we'll get some stuff plugged in. So something else that I've noticed with a lot of these power stations is you can see this number is going down what appears to be rather quickly uh, sometimes these things sit in warehouses or in storage for weeks if not months so there's obviously no load and it's went from 40 percent to 32 percent just from turning the display on this is actually kind of a good thing um, i want this thing to go all the way down um, and then i'll charge it up and we'll get it up to 100 percent, and then the batteries will be stable and they'll last a whole lot longer so the first thing I'll show you being charged today is just a, uh, an iPhone, an iPad mini. Uh, we'll get a fan going here. I'm going to use their cable that's provided. And basically to use any of the ports, make sure that the unit's on. And then basically press whichever port you want to use or whichever output you want to use. So I want to use these USB DC. So I just press that and you can see the blue lights on there now. And you can use basically either of these that you want. Okay, so let's get the lightning cable and we'll plug a phone in. And as you can see, that is now charging. Okay. We'll take the USB-C. This was at 100% already, but it'll still show you that it's going to be charging it plugged in there now and that is charging and then we still have the uh, micro USB so we'll take that plug this into a USB fan make sure that's gonna come on And as you can see, I've got all three things plugged in and it still allows me my other two ports. So if I have other things to plug in here, I can. So it leaves those other ports open so that if I want to put a USB light, I can run that off of that now. So again, I've got iPad charging, phone charging, Fan still on. I have it on low right now just so it doesn't drown out the sound here, but that's on. Lights on. Again, I can, I got a switch on this one that I can put that on and off. So we'll leave that on. Let me grab something else. Let's say I have a flashlight that needs charged. 
This one is a USB-C rechargeable, and that port is a, a power delivery. It's a 65 watt. Um, I will check it here in a bit to see if it is bi-directional um, or if it's just output only, uh, but you can charge like MacBooks and you know other laptops and stuff from that. But we'll get that plugged in now. So I've had all this stuff here plugged in and running for 10 to 15 minutes or so. And once I got a load on it, it stabilized at that 32% and hasn't decreased any since then. Now I'll be able to go back and look at the time when I plug this stuff in. And as you can see, now at 100%. So let's get a heavier load plugged in so we can take this thing all the way down to 0%. So let's say that this light isn't bright enough for you or that fan isn't strong enough for you. Again, you can just take any regular lamps or anything. I'm just using like a table lamp here for demonstration. And now we want to use the AC side. So we're going to turn that on. The inverter fan kicked on for a split second just to kind of let you know that it's running. And we're going to plug in that light now. Again, we'll watch the wattage change a little bit. Um, we're up to seven watts down there right now. But I got all this stuff still running. So now let's get this fan here. I don't know how many watts it pulls, but let's get it plugged in and see what it shows. All right, get that thing plugged in. This is probably gonna be pretty noisy here for a minute. How well that's showing up right now we're pulling 25 watts and that's with one two three four five six things going and so these are all still pretty small loads um, again I still got that light going too those are just regular LED bulbs in those that's still going So I've had most of this stuff plugged in for about a half an hour or more, and we've only dropped 1%. We're at 31% now. So I'm gonna get something that draws a much heavier load uh, to get this thing all the way down to zero so we can start charging it back up. So now we'll add this bigger box fan. I know it pulls at least 80 watts. All right, we'll get it plugged in here. So up on its highest setting, it's pulling 166. Medium setting is just over 100. Low setting is just over 80 watts. I'm probably gonna keep it there and allow this to go all the way down until the unit shuts off. We'll see how long that lasts. Right now, it's just after 12. So I've been running this box fan for well over an hour now. And one thing I really like about the King Boss here is that the display does not time out when you have a load on it. A lot of these, after like five seconds, the display will go black. And so if you wanna know how much percentage you have left, and so if you gotta come over and keep constantly hitting the button, and the entire, like, I ran the, the other devices for like a half hour before I plugged this fan in. So basically for over an hour and a half, that display has stayed on. It maybe dims down, but it stays on. See how that just got brighter there? So let's put a heavier load on and see if it'll handle it. This is 120 volts, five amps. So that should be 600 watts which is basically what this thing is rated at. So let's see if it'll power it and if it'll stay on. So no problems running that at all. It does seem like the startup is a little bit slow. Got a 
initial surge on it, I think is a little bit high. Once it gets going, it seems to be perfectly fine. So if it did that drill, it should be able to do this jigsaw, no problem at all. This one is 120 volt, 3.2 amps. So we're what, 360, 370 on the watts. So shouldn't be any problem at all for it. So I've had this 100 watt load running for a few hours now. We're down to 2%. Um, so I kind of suspect probably in the next uh, 15 minutes to a half hour, this thing will probably shut off on me. All right, I heard the thing beeping, came back into the room and we are at 0%. Occasionally on some of these power stations when it shows 0%, you can power them off, power them back on a minute later, and like the DC will still have a little bit left in it. But this one, it looks like once it gets to 0%, um, you can't even like power on the DC side either. So we'll get the thing charged back up here. So the first way of charging, I'm gonna see how many watts I can get using the car here. So I've got it plugged in down there to the cigarette lighter. Just plug it in here. Most of these are only like uh, 50 or 60 watts. So it looks like we got 64 watts, 65, so somewhere just over 60. And that's pretty normal for these. I've had some that are as low as like 35 or 40 watts. So if this thing is 568 watt hours um, at 60 some watts charging, that's gonna take what, like nine hours or so. Um, so if you were using your 12 volt in your car, that's going to take about nine hours to charge that thing completely back up. All right, I've had this thing in the car running for a little while, and we're at 11% charge now. We'll unplug it from the car and try a couple other ways. So I want to make sure that this King Boss will charge via solar. Um, unfortunately, this is the only panel that I have right now. Uh, it's just a little 80 watt. Um, so at best, I'm probably going to get like maybe 50 and it's not the ideal time of day. It's going on three o'clock in the afternoon, but enough excuses. Let's plug it in and see what we get here. So yeah, I am getting over 50 watts. I don't know how well that's showing up. It's actually pretty decent. I mean, that's almost as much as charging uh, by the car. So yes, and again, I think in the earlier in the day, we could probably pull more than that out of this little unit. Yeah, I know the glare is really bad, but it's staying over 50 watts, which is actually pretty impressive for this panel. And the last way to charge it is via that wall adapter. I would suspect this will be around 100 watts, or maybe a little over, but we'll see. So, yep, yeah, just over 100 watts. Take five, five and a half hours, and I'll let this charge this way since it is the highest. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, basically, can you use this while it's being charged? It's called pass-through charging. Um, some of them you cannot. This King Boss, you definitely can. Um, the one thing that I would recommend for any of these power stations, though, is to be mindful of how many watts you have coming in versus how many you have going out. And I would always keep the, the input higher. Um, and it's also better to use the DC ports when you're trying to do pass-through charging um, versus using the inverter. So I'll show you with with this light here. Uh, let me get this thing hooked up over here. And so I'll just plug it into one of the ports here. I'll turn the light on. Oh, I gotta turn that USB on. So now that's on. 
turn that on. You can see I'm only pulling eight watts with that light. And I really like this about the King Boss. Um, a lot of these don't show both. They'll show input or output, whichever's higher. The King Boss here shows both. Uh, pretty nice feature on that. And this light right here, you can see what I was talking about earlier, about the kind of like scuffs kind of looking on that display. Having one of these ring lights is really good for a power outage. They draw almost no wattage. You can change the color temperature of them. And even at that nine watts right there, that's at its very, very highest setting, uh, which I can take this down to probably like less than five. You can see like, and the light is still on. I'll show you here. So that's enough to illuminate an entire room only using three watts. But the pass-through charging does work. Another question I get asked a lot, um, are all these 12 volts, are they regulated or not? And the King Boss is a regulated 12 volt. Super important if you're trying to run one of those 12 volt refrigerators um, because you do not want this thing to like idle below a certain wattage and then shut off thinking that there's nothing being powered on it. So that is a 12 volt regulated output. Earlier in the video, I mentioned I wasn't sure if this was a USB-C input and output or if it was output only. And according to the manual, it is an output only, 65 watt. And there is some more information in case there are things that I don't go over. All right, we're up to 100%, so we'll get it unplugged and do some more testing with it. I did want to quickly show that light on the side. Basically, just a single press gives you like a spotlight flashlight. And then one more press gives you an SOS. And then it's back off after that. I kind of prefer a floodlight myself, like a work light, but that light will do in a pinch. So one other thing I wanted to show you guys is like this TV right here. I've got like one of those little antennas hooked up to it and I can get about 15 channels um, without even having cable or anything. So right now I have it plugged into the wall, but I'm going to unplug it and then put it into the King Boss power station. So that TV is pulling 31 watts. And if this thing is almost 600 watt hours, that means I could watch TV for about 20 hours. Well, all right, guys, I know this video is getting really long, but I wanted to show you how capable these power stations are, um, not just for power outages, um, but you can use these out on a boat. You know, let's say you wanted to take a television with you and watch the game while you're out boating. You can use these in a hunting blind if you need some lights or some fans or run a radio or whatever, whatever it might be. Um, you can use these for tailgating, for off-grid properties. There's so many uses for them. So, I mean, I really think that everybody should have one of these. The King Boss is coming in at about the cheapest per watt hour that I've seen any power station to date. So, I showed the receipt in that box earlier in the video. This is the price on them right now. So, they were $3.59. There was a clickable coupon on Amazon for 60 bucks off, which basically brought it to $2.99. After tax and everything, it was $3.19. And again, it's almost a 600 watt hour. You do the math there, it's basically just over 50 cents per watt hour. Um, and just for comparison, here is the uh, Jackery. And this one actually has fewer watt hours than what this does. And that's $500 right now. And then the Goal Zero, Again, fewer watt hours than what the King Boss has. And those are on sale for $559. Um, and again, these are $300 if that clickable coupon's there. Even if it's not, $360 is 200 bucks cheaper than the Goal Zero. And you get more watt hours, which means you have more capacity with these. But overall, I'm really impressed with this King Boss. They did have a 500 a watt one and it did not have the USB-C port. So this is an updated version. Um, and I will leave an Amazon link to this down in the video description if anybody wants more information on it or anything like that. So 
All right, guys, that's it on this one. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.